Praise the Lord. Hope everyone is recovering. Hope everyone is feeling better. And hope everyone is having a better health. Thank God for the presence of God in our lives. And as you heard earlier, I lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my health. My health cometh from the maker of heaven and earth, and he has been helping us in all our walks of life. We are all confined to our houses. We are restricted from going to schools, colleges, churches, workplaces, due to a very small, tiny organism that can only be measured in nanometers. It has invaded our lives. Due to the invasion by this tiny organism, there is all kinds of uncertainty around us. There is uncertainty about the schools, colleges, churches, workplaces. We all heard about uh, Catherine Kuhlman. Catherine Kuhlman used to have a radio program several years ago. And at the start of the radio program, every time she would say this, as long as God is still on the throne, as long as he still hears and answers prayers, and as long as our faith in him is still intact, everything will be all right. As long as God is in control, and as long as our faith is intact, everything will be all right. It doesn't mean that everything is always going to be working in our favor at all times. There might be oppositions. We might go through difficult situations, but in these tough situations, it is important that our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ be intact. That we have a strong faith, a faith that is rooted and grounded in Jesus, a faith that is deep rooted. Yes, the winds of uncertainty are blowing very hard, stronger, much stronger than the winds of Oklahoma that we encountered yesterday. But let us be strong in the faith, not get tossed to and fro by all the things that's going around and let our faith be intact. Second Peter chapter one, verse one, Peter talks about this faith. He says, the faith that we have in Jesus Christ it is a precious faith. We have obtained this faith, and that is a very valuable faith. It is valuable, and it is much more precious than anything else in this whole universe. It is a precious faith. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1 says, We have obtained this faith through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Our righteousness was imparted to Jesus Christ, and his righteousness was imparted to us. That is called the double transaction. And that is just because of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we have faith in Jesus, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, We who have the faith in Jesus, there is a divine power. Those who have faith in Jesus have a divine power that provides everything, everything in our lives. It provides everything that pertains to our physical life as well as our metaphysical life or non-physical life. That's why Psalms 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord gives us everything that we need in our lives. There's a supernatural power that provides protection. Psalms 91, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. People of God, in these tough times, it is the divine, supernatural of God, power of God. Because of the faith that we have in Jesus, it provides protection from pestilences, from terrors, from darkness, and from the arrows that is flying all around us. Notice verse 3 of 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Those who have faith in Jesus, 
a call for a very, very special purpose. Yes, we are covered by his supernatural power, protected by his divine power. We have the divine provisions of God, those who have the faith in Jesus Christ. But notice, pay attention to verse 3. It is for a virtuous living. The faith that we have in Jesus Christ, the fruit of the faith in Jesus Christ should be obvious that is virtuous living. King James Version uses the word virtue. And the Greek word for virtue is arati. It means excellent moral standards, high moral standards. I don't know how virtue is translated in Malayalam, the virtue means the quality of doing what is right and avoiding what is in wrong, what is wrong. Malayalam readers, please look into it. Peter is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Breath by the Spirit of God moved upon him. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. He's explaining that we have obtained this faith in Jesus Christ to live a life, a virtuous life, a life of excellent moral standards. Now think about Peter. He was just an ordinary man, just like any one of us. He had an impulsive personality. He was ambitious. At times he's been deceitful. He has betrayed. He's very outspoken. He's very impatient. How did Peter get to this understanding that we cannot be impulsive, we cannot be deceitful, we cannot be betrayful, we cannot be impatient? People who have faith in Jesus should have a virtuous living, should have a high and excellent moral standards. Let us look into one of the event in the New Testament in the life of Peter, where we can possibly draw some inference to what may have triggered Peter's changed behavior. Let's turn to Luke chapter five. How many times have we heard from Luke chapter five? Pastor Shibu Thomas delivered a very beautiful message at the New Year. From Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell at the feet of Jesus saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the big catch of the fish which they had taken. You know what? Jesus during his earthly ministries went and preached in Galilee, in Samaria, in Judea. Lots of people came to listen to his message. And there would be no place for him to stand to speak to the crowd. In this particular situation, Jesus, as he is at the shores of Galilee, by the river Galilee, he saw two boats. One of the boats belonged to Peter. And Jesus must have asked Peter, hey, Peter, can I use your boat? And with Peter's permission, Jesus got into Peter's boat. Then asked the boat to be moved a little away from the shore so that he can communicate to the crowds of people. Jesus sat in the boat and taught people out of the boat. We do not know what are the contents of the boat of the talk that Jesus talked to the people. But let's look into verse 4 and 5. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said unto Simon, take your net, launch your net into the deep waters. When Peter answered, Jesus, Master, they told all night. I've got nothing, but at thy word, I will let down the net. You know what? Peter knows Galilee very well. The river of Galilee is very familiar to him. He's a very professional fisherman. He's pro at it. He must have tried all the tricks of his trade last night, but he did not catch a single fish. Had zero success. But Peter responds to Jesus. He's saying, at your word, I will cast the net. Peter is starting to yield to Jesus. You know what? Many times we use our logic, our skills to perform a task. If we don't have the skills, we go out for training to attain the skills that are required. But remember, our logic, our skill set, our training without Jesus will not have much effects. Peter told whole night. He probably used all his tactics, skill, and logic. He probably was at his wit's end. He started to yield to Jesus. Peter must have said in his heart, Lord, I have tried everything. That's why Peter is saying, 
I have not got anything. Jesus, at your word, I will cast the net. At your word. I think one of the reasons Jesus came to the shore of Galilee that particular day may have been for Peter and his team. People of God, we may be smart, professional, skillful, trained at our task. But remember, if we have to have a success, it, we must have Jesus in our life. Where Jesus is coming to Peter and team at a very crucial moment of his life. It is the same with us. Hasn't Jesus appeared to us at crucial moments of our life and have come down and spoken to our lives? Let's read what's happening next. Verses 6 and 7. And when they had lost the net, they caught a great multitude of fishes. And then at break, and they beckoned their partners who were in the boat, other boat. And they said, come, help. And they came and filled both the ships so that the ship or the boat began to sink. Can you imagine the commotion that is going on there by the river of Galilee? There's a big catch of fish all of a sudden. The net is breaking. The boat is sinking. Peter may be screaming at the top of his lungs. Help me. Help me. Help me, James. Calm down. Help me, John. Get here quickly. Peter and John are jumping from the boat to the Peter's boat. They might be exhausted, they might be excited, as well as they might be getting exhausted. But you know what? Something else was going on in Peter's mind. Peter is having something else going on. Let's read verse 8 and 9. After having the big catch of fish, Peter is saying, Lord, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at the feet of Jesus and saying, Depart from me, Jesus. For I am a sinful man, O Lord. For Peter was shocked at all that were with him and all that with him, the big catch of the fish which they had taken. How many of us would have this kind of response as Peter at the moment of this big catch of fish had a great success? Imagine we were in Peter's place after the big catch of fish had a big success. We would have thought, hmm, this is pretty good. I will ask Jesus. If he can be here with me all the time, I will make you the general manager while I'll become the CEO. I am going to start a company. Yes, I'm going to make lots of money. I'll make lots of profit. Then with that money, I'll buy real estate and stocks, not only for me, but for my dear ones and my generations. Peter could have started a big Peter fishing company and could have done franchises maybe all the way from New York to Los Angeles. But what did Peter do when this miracle happened? Something different. He allowed Jesus to touch him. Peter allowed a gentle touch from Jesus. And see the response of Peter? Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Can we allow Jesus to touch our lives? Can we allow Jesus to get into the areas of our lives where he wants to get in? Jesus wants to get into the areas of life and clean us up. Let get, let's get Jesus in our lives and let him do the necessary things, cleaning, surgery, operation in our lives. Peter, rather than going after the miracle, he's going beyond the miracle, children of God. This is something we all need to understand. We often make this big mistake. We need to learn to go beyond the miracle. Jesus is so gentle, day in and day out, he does miracles after miracles, his divine presence, his protection, his uh, provisions in our life. But do we allow Jesus deep into our lives, in different areas of our life? We stay around the miracles that Jesus did for, we stay around the miracle for days, sometimes for months, very, very long time, sometimes for many years and sometimes for many generations. But can we go beyond the miracle? Many times we have success just like Peter had. We have promotions, we have healing, we get admissions and programs, we get bonuses, we get pay raises, we get good, good grades, God blesses us. Are we able to go beyond just like Peter, behind the miracle, behind the, uh, uh, after the uh, miracle of the success? Peter is teaching us a great lesson. 
find out what God wants from each one of us in this year 2022. After we have the successes or miracles and all the blessings that God has blessed us with. When God blesses us, what does God want from each one of us? God brought us into this land of America. What does God want us from us when he brought us to America? Let me go back to verse 8. It still baffles me. I'm shocked at Peter's response. Peter is saying, depart from me, O Lord. I am a sinful man. What exactly is going on with Peter? What is, what is happening to Peter? What is the state of mind? It is an existential moment in the life of Peter. Peter had a moment of deep questioning and examining within himself. He realizes he's standing before a person who has the eyes of flame. This person is able to scan everything. How did Peter get beyond this miracle of big catch of fish? How did he get beyond, beyond this great success? Rather than starting, starting a great big fishing company, something else is happening to Peter. He often hear the statement, we need to see as God he is. And then when we see God as he is, then we will know who we are. I think Peter started to see Jesus in a different context. He had a different perspective about Jesus. He started to see Jesus differently. What did Jesus, Peter see in Jesus? We study anthropology. We study psychology. We study psychiatry. Study of anything can only be complete when we know who God is and when we see who we are in the light of God who he is. No wonder. After God's own heart, this man said, one thing I desire of the Lord, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of him. People of God, there is so much to learn of Jesus and to learn from God. I was wondering why this pandemic is still going on. It is going to be over two years. We are wave number one, wave number two. Now we're in number three. Vaccination number one, vaccination number two, booster number one. Now they're saying we have more boosters. Why are we spared? What is going on? Maybe God is telling us, hush. Everybody hush. Enough of the sacrifices. Enough of the programs. Stop. Listen from me. Learn from me. Pay attention to what I'm trying to tell. Hush. He's asking, can you listen from me? What did Peter see in Jesus? What is Peter starting to see in Jesus? You know what? Peter is starting to see Jesus something different. He saw Jesus was pure. That Jesus in the boat, rather than the big catch of fish and the big uh, success, he's starting to see Jesus was so pure. Jesus was transparent. He saw Jesus had no guile in him. He had no deception. He had no deceit. She, uh, he, Peter saw in Jesus, he had no malice. How do we know this? Because he explains all these attributes of God or Jesus in the epistles of the Peter. Peter saw in Jesus, there was no hypocrisy. He saw Jesus was patient. He saw Jesus was a person with steadfastness. He saw in Jesus full of love. Peter saw Jesus was holy. At that moment, Peter came to a realization of who Jesus is and what is his true condition. Pastor Shibu Thomas preached on a series, Stand in Awe, Awe and Sin Not. This is exactly what is happening to Peter. Peter is awed at the presence of Jesus. Awed. The meaning of awe is reverential. We misuse this word in today's context. The word awe. Awesome is used quite a bit. When I do a task at my work, I get this response, oh, you awesome. But in its original meaning, there's only one and only one we need to be awed at or is awesome. And it is Jesus Christ. Because nobody can do what he does. He is the only one we need to be awed at. We should think twice before we use the word awesome. 
in contrast to Jesus, Peter is starting to see that he is nothing. Have you ever come to this realization? Who we are in contrast to Jesus. Once Peter came to this realization, he found out how much he needs to grow in Jesus. Now, it all makes sense what Peter is saying in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. When we say that we have faith in Jesus, what is Jesus expecting from each one of us? We enjoy the divine presence of Jesus. We enjoy the provisions. We enjoy the protections. He wants each one of us. Jesus expects to have a virtuous life. A life with a great character and conduct. A life of high moral excellence. Now it makes sense what Peter is talking about the faith in Jesus. Having faith in Jesus should motivate us to have a virtuous life. Having faith in Jesus should lead us to know who Jesus really is and submit our life for an excellent moral life. May the faith that Peter had in Jesus lead us to higher levels and we have greater faith and greater excellence in our moral life. Let us come to the knowledge of who Jesus is. Then we will know who we are. We are nothing. We are absolutely nothing. We can only say, Jesus, I'm a sinful man. Let us have this experience. Let us have this experience of who God is, who Jesus is. And then we understand who we truly are. And then we can take the steps of a virtuous living. And then we know, like Peter says, we need to know, pay attention to what our election and what our calling is. We are called for a virtuous living. When we see God as he is, and when we will know who we are, we'll stop all the dramas. In Hindi, it is called tamashas. All the tamashas will stop. We'll stop acting as performers. We'll stop all the gimmicks. And we'll get in the mode of understanding who we are in the light of who Jesus is. We will sing the song, Oh Jesus, I want to learn more of you. Peter is saying, Lord, I am a sinful man. And he wants to know more about Jesus. This is a huge revelation. I'm going to close my words here. This is a very... There is a very popular verse. When this pandemic started, we all heard it many times. And that is from the book of Second Chronicles. It says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn away from the wicked ways, I will listen to the prayers. I'll hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. People of God, can we have this revelation, this huge revelation that Peter had, this revelation that Peter had about Jesus, it triggered his life, his walk in a different path. And now he's wanting to know more about Jesus rather than going and starting a big fishing company. He's saying, Lord, I am a sinful man. What can I do to learn from you? And in the episodes, he's saying that. Let us all commit ourselves to a virtuous living and may God bless us with these words.